Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Bricks Cascade 2018, and I'm joined by Jake Sadovich, and he's the, the fan designer of the Ship in the Bottle idea set here. So we're gonna have him give some insight into his design and what the process was like to get that set made through LEGO Ideas. So if you wanna start off by telling us about what the inspiration was for your original build you submitted to Ideas. I actually built a real Ship in a Bottle out of a, it was a small kit that I built several years ago, and I thought about it for quite a long time and kind of brainstormed on what parts I might use, and it was probably a year and a half before I decided to actually see if I could do it and make the attempt. Mm -hmm. so. And when you started out, obviously you've got some interesting, really like trans clear pieces, and then the pieces for the ship. Did you have a lot of those pieces, or did you have to source a lot of those to kind of come to come together with the idea? Um, for the trans clear, the larger these older ones, I definitely had to source them. I got them off Bricklink. Um, a lot of the other stuff I did have, and. I just had to come up with some of the different parts, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for the ship itself, was that based on any real, particular like real life ship or just kind of a ship that would look good within the bottle you would build? Yeah, not any uh, particular named ship. It is based on a, the galleon style ship, but there was no uh, specific ship that it was modeled after. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to submit this to Ideas? Was that something you had kind of set out to do from the very beginning of the build or just something once you finished it you thought it would make a cool set? Yeah, no, um, I actually just, set out to see if I could even do it. It was just kind of a personal challenge to okay. try and do it. And then it was actually after I posted on Facebook and then uh, quite a lot of people really liked it and commented a lot and many, many people suggested to put it up on ideas. So I looked into the ideas and the rules and made sure it wasn't gonna break any of the rules and went ahead and threw it on there. Yeah, perfect. And had you voted for projects and used ideas in the past or posed posting this kind of your first experience with the site? Um, yeah, I wasn't real familiar. I had seen some of the other sets, but I wasn't real familiar with the actual site itself. So I kind of looked into it as I was looking and deciding whether or not to put it up. Mm -hmm. so. And once that was up, what was that process like of sort of going out and getting people to vote for it and getting the word out about the project? Um, that was really fun. Mostly it was just sharing it in as many like Lego Facebook groups as you can. and I. I um, shared it in some ship modeling communities and even a ship in the bottle. I found a community for that online. <laughs> and I just tried to share it everywhere that I could because you just want as many people to see it as you can. Was there any few sites or particular people that shared it that kind of brought in a lot of votes or was it pretty much a, a gradual kind of steady process? Um, well, it didn't take very long in the scheme of things. Um, there were some uh, particular supporters that went out of their way to share it. And there was one in particular who, on in one of the particular groups, he commented on it every single day. <laughs> wow. To bump it to the top of the page, because he said that's what he does for ones he's supporting. So that was really cool. Like every single day it was bumped to the top of the page. So that really helped to keep it front and center. Mm -hmm. So you had some very dedicated fans there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. Do you remember how many months it took to, to get the votes required? It was 48 days. Okay, wow. So, so yeah, yeah that was in two months. So yeah, definitely uh, pretty quick there. Would, do you have any tips then for people who might be submitting their own ideas projects to, to getting those votes and kind of figuring out the best way to do that to get the word out? Yeah, um, a lot of it you want to take really good clear pictures so that they can see really what it is. Um, and I think it's just you want to get as many people to look at it as possible. Because they do have to, they have to go on and they have to create a login in order to vote. So you might get one in ten people that see it and like it enough to actually take that step, even though it only takes two minutes. You're just asking someone to take a couple minutes, make an account that they may never use again mm -hmm. to vote. So you want as many people as possible to see it. Mm -hmm. For sure. And so then once you had the, the required amount of votes, uh, talk about the process after that as far as like Lego working with you uh, once it was approved. Okay, um, yeah, once you've got the 10,000, then you send in any digital files you may have, any kind of instructions so that their designers have the best uh, thing to start with that they can. And then after that, once it's in review, it's like radio silence. You don't know anything, hear anything, <laughs> until they've decided yay or nay. And then at that point, you get to work, you can Skype and work with the designers a little and give them any kind of feedback and they, just as they're building the model. Mm -hmm. um, so they're probably looking for kind of what your thought process was behind it as they then set out to make the official set that will be released. Yeah, yeah, and I was able to kind of give them that and show them how I did different things in the model and then they, they kind of basically took it from there to mm -hmm. see how they could produce one that was more user-friendly and 
better for a wide variety of an audience. Were there things that when you submitted this, you knew they would probably have to change up that like probably wouldn't go into an actual set? Were there things that you figured they would they would switch up when you if it got approved? Yeah, like I figured there was no way rigging was going to happen mm -hmm. because it's all hand tied, of course, in there and. That's a little even complex. With, yeah, with even <laughs> with the the uh, strings with the studs on the end, that's a much thicker string, so it looks way goofy out of scale. So I figured there was no way on that. And I knew it was it was pretty flimsy, so they would have to come up with something to get around that. And really, the only choice there was to shrink it <laughs> <laughs> to make it more sturdy. So, mm -hmm. which then of course means you a uh, complete redesign and a smaller ship that will actually fit in the smaller bottle. So. Right, exactly. So that kind of touches then on, on some of the changes they made. What, what, what were some of the other things that, that they changed pretty significantly from your original design here? Um, the stand was completely, I kind of went overboard. It just, <laughs> just as I was building, I just wanted it to be the super ornate stand. And generally in a real one, it is a nice, clean little um, basic wooden stand. So they cleaned that up really nice and it's all studless and it looks really great. Um, of course, they shrank the bottle so that basically just changed the outer dimensions of that. And let's see, and then they printed new tiles for, or I mean new flags for the ship that looked really cool. They tried to keep that same uh, red and white checked pattern with the print and then came up, created a new print for that. Mm -hmm. so, and then they, oh, they put a cork in, which I actually was working on a cork and then I just gave up. I was, just wasn't I was like, I, two days, okay, never mind. I'll do a cap, you know? And they, they of course, figured out how to get a cork in there, and then they added a really cool wax seal that was a really nice touch that I hadn't thought of, so. And did they get your input on sort of instructions or like graphics or box design at all, or was that pretty much all Not there? much, that was kind of, they, they do all that kind of stuff internally, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so what was your final thought then on the, on the set that was released after it went through all the changes? What, what was your final thoughts when you saw the, the product? Oh, it looks great. Um, I think they did a really good interpretation of it, and that's what I did. You know, it's, you're not selling a mock instructions to Lego. You're giving them an idea, and they see if they can run with it. And so, of course, they stuck to the idea and came up with a really great little set. And I love the box art, it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think they, the Lego Ideas projects in general, I think they do a really good job of like presenting them really well. Yeah, all the box art and the instructions are really cool, so. Well, that's really neat. I can definitely congratulations on getting the project through. Do you have uh, more Ideas projects planned for the future, other things you want to submit to the site? Um, I'm thinking about one. It just kind of depends on if I get it built and like it well enough that if I don't like it well enough to show to everyone, then mm -hmm. I'm not going to show everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense then. <laughs> but if I do, then I'll put that up. It's an ornithopter, Leonardo da Vinci's ornithopter. Okay, so, yeah. In the back burner. Yeah. <laughs> that'd, that'd be very cool. Maybe we'll look forward to seeing that in the future then. But until then, you've got this uh, great kit that has been released already. So yeah. that's that's really impressive. You can walk into a Lego store and see your see your kit yeah. on, the, on the walls. Yeah, with my picture in there. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs>